Now, we've been already reflecting on Thanksgiving Sunday, and I just want to continue the David narrative that we started uh, last week, which Mal read a bit more of today in our Bible reading. So last time we heard about Saul, um, because the people wanted a king, and um, Samuel, and um, with the help of God, chose Saul to be the king, because he was strong and good-looking, um, but that didn't quite work out. And so in the reading we had last week, um, God called Samuel to go and anoint a new king, King um, a David, a young man with a humble, trusting heart. God promised that one day David would be king, and in today's reading, we sort of have the second part of that promise. You know, he was anointed, and then in today's reading, he was crowned king. And then, as we heard in the next chapter, there was a whole bunch of celebration, thanksgiving, and praise that was happening around that time as they moved into this new era of King David. But there's actually a bit of chunk of time between those two readings. There, it didn't just sort of, oh, he was anointed, and then soon after, David was crowned king. There was a chunk of time, and, and although that whilst um, we can't work it out exactly, we can get pretty close to think that it's around about 14 years in between those two Bible readings. So God has made this promise that David would be the next king. He is anointed, everyone's excited. And then at 14 years, wait until it, that promise is fulfilled. No wonder they're praising God when it finally happens. No wonder there's that great sense of thanksgiving. But it's easy to praise God when things are going right, isn't it? It's easy to be thankful when things turn out when, as, as you want them to. You know, when the sun is shining or your football team has just won the World Cup or whatever it might be, um, it is easy to praise God. But as Kevin hinted before, sometimes it's not always easy, always easy to be thankful. Sometimes we find ourselves in places which it's not as easy to praise God. And so today I just want to briefly join the dots between those two different experiences of David being anointed and David being crowned and sort of see how David discovered how to be thankful, how to praise God in whatever circumstances he was finding himself. As was already mentioned, um, David wrote a lot of psalms. Um, it's about two-thirds of the psalms in, in the Bible, or not quite two-thirds, um, that David wrote. So there's a fair chunk of the ones that he wrote. And um, we, we can begin to see some of the the things that are happening in David's light, and we can connect them back to some of the Psalms that he wrote. So straight after the, the, what we looked at last week, the anointing of David, the next chapter is David and Goliath, where you know, David's trajectory starts to rise, going from an unknown shepherd boy to being this national hero. Well, defeating Goliath helps. But there was a whole bunch of other things that happened around that time when David um, joined the army when he was old enough and then led people in the battle and, and had all these success and the people loved David and he was on this trajectory going up and up and up and everything's going great. And you can see that reflected, as I said, in some of the Psalms. So for example, Psalm 66 that says, Shout for joy to God all the earth. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Come and see what the Lord has done. How awesome are the Lord's deeds for us all. Here's another one, Psalm 111. Great are the works of the Lord. Glorious and majestic are God's deeds. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. The works of his hands are faithful and just. And then the psalmist goes on to, to give a whole stack of things that we should be thankful for and ends up with that, this last line, to God belongs eternal praise. And I'm just scratching the surface here. I could do this with a hundred other psalms where the psalmist is praising God for what God has done. 
to look around and see all these great things that God has done and in response to give God praise. And that makes sense, doesn't it? It's, it's a good thing to do that. That's what half of these things on the board are, aren't they? Looking at what God has done and giving God thanks and praise for what God has done. And so when we do feel showered with blessings, when we, um, things are just going well in our lives, we should be offering God back praise. But the problem with David's trajectory up as people loved him more and more and more is it corresponded with the trajectory down of Saul. As people loved David more, Saul became very insecure. Even though he was still king, he became very insecure, became a little bit mad in what he was doing and made the decision to try and kill David. And so just as David is peaking being a national hero, he's suddenly on the run from a murderous king. And that's what half the chapters are in between those two events of David running from Saul. And once again, we can see a number of um, these events reflected in the Psalms. And so we have something like Psalm 59, which says, this is David writing, deliver me from my enemies, O God. Deliver me from evildoers and save me from those who are after my blood. See how they live and wait for me. Fierce men compare to against me for no offence or sin of mine Lord I have done no wrong yet they're ready to attack me see this is the tension that David was sitting with if it's look around the world and see what God has done and then give God praise what happens when we look around and things aren't great what happens if we look around and we're not seeing what God is doing how do we give God praise then? And this is what David's saying. I'm looking around, all I can see is problems. And so if I'm supposed to observe the great deeds of God, I'm not easily seeing that at the moment. And I'm not sure what to do. Here's another one, Psalm 13. Once again, David writing, How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts? Day after day I have sorrow in my heart. Can, can you hear the depth of emotion here? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. <laughs> how do we find... How do we give God thanks? How do we find a place where we can praise God if we're so used to just praising God for what God does and David's looking around going, I can't see what God's doing at all. When those blessings have vanished, when his life is threatened, when the calling of being king now seems impossible, can David still praise God? Psalm 13 is one of the most amazing psalms. That is the entirety of the psalm which is up there. That's the first uh, four verses of Psalm um, 13. If I kept reading, these are the last two verses of Psalm 13. So David's just said, God, you're not seeing me, you're not hearing me, you've forgotten me, everything's going wrong here. I'm basically giving up and ready for death. And then David writes these two lines. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise for God has been good to me. <laughs> does anyone else read that and go, there is a disconnect between the first and the second. How does David do that? How does David just acknowledge the reality of what he is facing King Saul is trying to kill him. His life has fallen to pieces. And yet he will sing the Lord's praises. It's the same as the other psalm I read out, Psalm 59. 
um, the one that um, is saying I've done nothing wrong and yet they're trying to kill me. Here is uh, the last two verses of that one as well. But I will sing of your strength. In the morning I will sing of your love, for you are my fortress and my refuge in times of trouble. You are my strength and I will sing praises to you. You, God, are my fortress, my God on who I can rely. There seems to be this massive step of faith between the reality that David is facing and the decision that David will still praise God, even in the midst of all this. I'm not sure how he's doing this. How can he, in the midst of real difficulty and fear, still declare his trust, give thanks to God, and sing God's praises? An article I was reading as I was preparing this, which happened to be late last night because the the whole week has been flea market, but I was reading an article late last night, and I came across something I hadn't seen before, the Habakkuk Principle. Has anyone heard of that before? No. Um, I think it's something that the person who wrote the article made up, but that's okay, Um, because what they were referring to is Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 and 18, that goes like this. Um, Though the fig tree does not bud, and there is no grapes on the vine, Though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, pretty encouraging Bible reading so far, isn't it? The verse ends like this, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will be joyful in God my Saviour. And this person was writing, have a principle is basically going, actually our praise and our thanks don't have to be dependent upon the circumstances we find ourselves in. That we can still choose to give praise. We can still choose to give thanks. I would say for Habakkuk and for David and hopefully for ourselves, this idea of thankfulness and praise was something they just did. Not dependent upon what God has done, not dependent upon what was happening in their lives, but rather they chose to praise God regardless of the circumstances. They praise God because God is worthy of praise. And I think that's what David's ability was. If you read through the Psalms, David had this ability to praise God in all times and in all things. And I think that came from the realisation that it's good to give God praise. It's good to be thankful even if the situation we find ourselves in is not terribly great. Maybe the core of thanks and praise is less about what God has done and more about who God is. The narrative lectionary for today not only had that Bible reading of David being crowned, it also added Psalm 150 on there. And Psalm 150 is one of these classic psalms of prayers. We're going to read it together, um, responsively. I've got the words on the screen, you'll be fine. As we do, have a notice of how much praise David is talking about. And is David talking about praise God for what God has done or praise God for who God is? Except for one reading between the lines hint that it's about who God, what God has done, it's all about just praising God. David's just going, I'm here to praise God. Let's all praise God. Have a look at this. So here is Psalm 150. Um, I'm going to read the white, and I want you to respond um, thankfully, joyously, however you want to, um, with the bolded section. So praise the Lord. Praise God in God's sanctuary. Praise the Lord for his acts of power. Praise the Lord with the sounding of trumpet. Praise the Lord with trimble and dancing. Praise the Lord with the clash of cymbals. Praise the Lord with the Sorry. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
did you notice what David has done here? The, 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 the sort of like writing these psalms has moved on from let's pray, let's look at all of God's great deeds and give God thanks, which, don't get me wrong, is a good thing to do. But by the time he gets to Psalm 150, it's all about, man, let's just praise God. Let's not, let's not get too caught up in the circumstances we find ourselves. Let's look beyond that if we can and say, let's just praise God. Let everything that has breath praise God. Look, I don't know what you're going through at the moment. I don't know what your last week's been like, what your next month is going to be like. Well, actually, I do know some of your stories. And I know that for some people, it's, it's hard going at the moment. Maybe you're living the dream at the moment. Maybe everything has gone right for you. Well, for some people, it has gone right this morning. But for some people, yeah, things are going great. And if that's you, let's just praise God. Let's just praise God. But if you're one of these people that are sitting in a difficult time, that you're crying out to God, and a bit like David going, you're not hearing me, I'm not feeling you, Maybe you're struggling with a health issue or a personal difficulty or a relationship fracture or life is just hard and this whole idea of being thankful is just unrealistic. It's the challenge today to do what David did. And as I said, almost look beyond that, not to not recognise that we are going through this, but to look above and beyond that for a moment and to praise God for who God is. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15, it talks about a sacrifice of praise. And I think for some of us, it's a bit like that, isn't it? We go, well, we're going to praise God for who God is. And it's going to be a little bit of a sacrifice because it's hard to do at the moment. But we still choose to do that. So whatever is before us, may we have faith, the trust and the ability to declare that God is faithful like David did. May we say, well, we could say this together. Why not? Can we say this together at the end of Psalm 13? Let's say it together. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for God has been good to me. Amen. Just before I invite the band to come up and lead us in our next song and to help us um, yeah, as we take up our offering, um, I just wanted to mention uh, one of the things that we do on Thanksgiving Sunday is our Thanksgiving offering. Um, just very briefly, Thanksgiving offering is a way of um, contributing to some of the ideas of furthering the mission or the life of our congregation that are not currently in our church budget. So it's sharing our blessings to be a blessings for other people. So the Thanksgiving offering projects are not in our church budget, but they will make an immediate difference if they are supported through this one-off Thanksgiving offering. If they're not supported, that's fine. We just go, well, obviously God's not calling us to do that. Um, but you might go, yeah, there's a stirring here. I want to see that happen. Um, and Kevin and I and, and the church council and our stakeholders, we got together and went, what are some of the, these projects that haven't fitted into the church budget this year? And so uh, you can either look online, um, because they're all on our website, you can pick up a piece of paper, which is at the back, which is all on, which I've left over there, um, or there's these um, great little cards that I've got sitting on the table there that you can walk past and I uh, go, yep, yeah, that's the one that God's calling me to and pick that up and it's information on how to um, contribute to that offering at the back. But just very quickly, just while I'm standing at the front here, we have seven projects. Some of them are quite um, small this time because we realise that some people are struggling with the cost of living crisis and so some of them aren't quite as big as what we've done in previous years, although we still have a couple of big ones in there as well. So um, in terms of um, improving our um, resources here on site, uh, finishing off the coffee machine to actually buy a trolley suitable for it so we're not nicking the one from the kitchen, uh, which hasn't been in the kitchen for now two years. Um, we've noticed that we don't actually have any rubbish bins in public space in our complex here. They're all in the kitchen and if you're visiting our complex, you can't find a rubbish bin. 
Um, we don't want to put those rubbish bins out in the main area because they're not very nice. So we want to buy some nice looking garbage bins. Um, but also at the same time, encourage people to recycle. So um, you might have seen these same ones um, at St Ives Shopping Centre. Um, they're done by an Australian um, eco company who encourages um, recycling. We've got a couple of projects that are based around the new night initiative, uh, the night worship initiative called Evolve. Um, they're looking at doing some things that create a more homely environment and want to buy four lounges um, that look like that one up on the screen there. This is one of the expensive ones because they're eight hundred dollars each, but we don't we want them to last. That's why we're looking at these ones. Um, but there, yeah, you might go. That's something that's great. Uh, they also want to play with lighting. Uh, we've got a few lights. We don't have a lot of lights, and they want to be able to change the environment with lighting in different ways. That's one of the cheaper ones. Um, every year we, we have a project about blessing our missionaries. We, we give money to our missionaries as a church. Um, we do that as part of our budget. But this is above and beyond that, a special Christmas blessing for our missionaries. Um, but as a special bonus, uh, the, the Watkins... Uh, having, no, Wilkins. Watkins, Wilkins? Wilkins. <laughs> That's terrible of me. Um, are having twins very soon, like their third and fourth child, like in the next couple of weeks. Um, and so part of that will also be given as a baby present to them. Uh, the dishes asked us to help with the Christmas puddings for the hampers this year. Um, and so you might go, that's something that's good there. And the Carol's team is looking at putting some um, improving the carols this year with some more entertainment. We want to have a jumping castle, but because it's outside and everything that's gone on, we feel that we need to hire professional people to run that. Um, and you might want to contribute to that. So you got the idea. These are five project, uh, seven projects that are not in our budget. If we don't get funding, that's okay. They, they won't happen. But if we do get funding, it will make an immediate difference. This is above and beyond our normal tithes and offerings. It's a one-off yearly um, giving. So how do you do it? You can either go to our website and you can donate online right now if you wanted to. I know some people already have. I've seen some things come in. Uh, you can electronic fund transfer. The details are on the back of the here or on, um, yeah, on, on the screen right now. Or you can even just put a donation in an envelope, write the project on the front and drop it in the offering. We keep this open all through November. At the end of November, we start to make these happen. Um, you had already seen a whole bunch of things around the church that has come through Thanksgiving offerings, including when you have your coffee this afternoon, uh, after church, um, that came through a Thanksgiving offering um, project as well.